In this tutorial on programming, we're going to look at how we can create sprite art to use inside our game project. So when we have our tile map, currently we just have basic sprites that are rectangles. We want to replace that with an animated sprite that move or changes artwork based on the direction that you're moving so that we have artwork for moving left, right, up, and down. And to do that, we need to create some pixel art to go along with it. Now you can use whatever graphics program you like for doing so. One tool that I find really useful for producing sprite pixel art for this kind of project is Piscal. Now Piscal is a web or cloud-based app, so you can set up an account, it can keep track of all your stuff, and it's wonderful that way, and it's a great tool. If you find you're feeling a little bit less than creative, you can go and find artwork on websites such as opengameart.org, kenny.nl, both of these have great selections. So if I browse 2D artwork here and look through on something like this, so this gives me the basic tiny artwork that I could use for a game and if I look at the characters, now this gives me 16 by 16 pixel artwork, but there's a cool thing that we can do inside of Pascal is we can scale this up to match our game, which is currently running at 32 by 32 sized characters. So if I go and grab that file, I can see here in the downloaded file that it looks like this. Now, again, these are 16 by 16 pixel sprites, but the advantage of this is each of these eight characters has three frames of animation for moving in the four cardinal directions of left, right, up, and down. It does it, though, in the order of the first row is down, then left, then right, then up. So it's starting with the down, left, right, left, left, right, up, um, you can organize yours in whatever order that you want. So we could use this, and it's really small, but we can scale this up inside of Piscal if we want, or we can go and create some of our own artwork. And that's what we're going to look at first, is how would I go about creating the artwork. So we have basic drawing tools over here, and then I can go and choose whatever color that I want for drawing with it and if I notice I have my different sizes of cursors that I can choose along with this we can have additional layers now what's useful in this I see frame one and if I add a new frame and we have layers over here, we have frames that we can work with. So now if I add a new frame, we can see it's blinking because it's waiting for me to have artwork in that next frame. So now if my artwork is different in that next frame, we can see how it's kind of creating a little bit of bounce. So we can see where we're starting to create some degree of animation. Now if I wanted this to be a little bit more loopy, I could even take this frame here and duplicate that frame, but then move that frame down so it starts to create that kind of sense of bounce happening within it. Now if I grab a new color, and this time we'll go and grab purple color, Go grab my paint bucket. I can now fill that in and we can move up and down our frame. So I can now go to this prior frame, frame three, because we're at four. So I can fill that. I can fill, sorry, it's been a little slow in the clicking, and now we can see where we start to have some movement happening. Now as I do this, if I add it in an additional layer, you can see how the layer does sit separate from it. The layer has separate 
animation on it. So we can't even select that. Now I'm going to just copy paste these between frames here. So I'm using the selection tool to copy it. Move to my next frame, paste, next frame, paste, next frame, paste. Now, what I can also do with those being selected it's select this, read the directions, it tells me hold shift to move the content, so I hold shift, we'll move that down a little bit. Go to this frame here, move it down, well shifting didn't quite do what I wanted as it stretched it down, but that gives me a chance to demonstrate using the eraser tool on it. So if we're here, just going to select these, copy that, paste that in, we'll move them now, select that, and we can move them or just repaint them. Now that I can see where they are. Grab some eraser, so not my most elegant job on painting, but you should be getting the idea that we can indeed generate some artwork. Now, if we're going to do a full sprite, where we need to have our four directions. We need to continue, this would be, if this is a bounce in one direction, I would need to have additional frames in each of my directions. And I'm going to load a file where I have gone ahead and already done that so we can see how that works. So I'm going to just click Create Sprite so I have a new window to work with and import a file that I have saved previously. When I look at this file, it tells me it's 16 frames long, it's 32 by 32, and I'm just going to replace what's there, okay, because I don't care about what's there. Now what you'll notice is I have my little unicorn going in each direction. So it starts out right for four frames, left for four frames, up for four frames, and down for four frames. So we have each of these frames of artwork. Now one way that we could get our file out of Piscal is we could export it as a series of individual images. Now we can see we have export over here where we can choose what we want to export. And I want to create a sprite sheet similar to what we saw with the downloaded file from Open Game Art where it has all of my graphics in a single file. Because if we load them all as individual image files inside of processing, that's prone to typos, it's harder to manage. This way we only have to load a single graphic, which makes it easier. Now you could have two graphics, one for your enemies and one for the player, or you can end up combining them all together and putting it into a single sprite sheet so you can make each one separately and then you can import and instead of replacing you can add to it and then once you've done that we can export it out. So to export it out 
and click on the export tab and we'll see that we have different options. We could do a GIF, we don't want to do that. If we did a PNG, this is going to do each frame as its own individual PNG file. That's not what we want in this instance. Now, if we, or no, PNG will do a sprite sheet containing all frames. Zip will do a PNG for each individual frame, so I misspoke. The zip is the one we don't want right now because this, in this character's artwork, would make 16 separate files. But if I choose PNG, it's going to do four columns and four rows. And that works pretty good for me. And we can see options that we have available. The one that we are going to use in this example will be download sprite, sprite sheet file export. So it downloads it 16 frames, four across, four down. So with that, I can just simply hit download and it downloads my file. And we can see it now created a PNG file with the 16 frames of my unicorn. So that worked out pretty well for me. Now, once I have my work done, of course, we and want to keep it, that's where I can use save, where I can save it as a Pascal file. So it saves it to a file on my computer. I can save it locally to my browser so it stays in my data in my browser, but if I go to a different computer, I don't have access to it. So I don't recommend that option. I recommend saving it as a Pascal file. That's going to work much better for you. So now I'm going to choose Create Sprite again. And this time I'm going to import the tiny artwork. So we click on Import. And then I'm going to choose Browse Images because I'm going to upload or access the one that I downloaded. And the advantage of doing this, because I could scale it up in Photoshop, but when I do that, it anti-aliases the edges, so it makes them a little bit fuzzy. I don't have crisp, clean pixel art edges, which is what I want for this kind of project. So I've navigated to my character's file, I'll choose Open. And it says, hey, import as a single image or import as a sprite sheet. So single image would mean all of those would be on one frame and that would be really awkward. But if I choose import as a sprite sheet, then what I need to do is I need to know how big each of those frames are. And I know because it was tiny 16, there were 16 pixels that said so in the description. And now I will choose 16 again and I can see I get a perfect grid that's showing up. Some sprite sheets will have a space like a one pixel space in between each thing so you do have to pay attention to that when you are bringing it in and notice this is arguably far simpler than trying to bring it into Photoshop and X eyes uh, each little sprite out of here to grab each 16 pixel thing properly and have them all aligned that would just be a headache and nobody wants to do that so if you can find tools that work in your favor that's what you should do and Piscal is a great one. It says I'll replace it. Yes, that's what I want to do. And now we can see it goes through each one of my items. So we can see how we have our different sprites happening. So this is nice. We have all of that there. And now what I can do currently, because if I export it out, it's going to export it out at its original size here. So we can see 10 columns, 10 rows. But we don't want 10 columns, 10 rows. We want 12 columns and eight rows. That's how it's currently set up. But, so now, oh, I had my resolution scaled up really high before because I had done a scaled up export. So we do have to be careful on that, which I better go back and check my other one. So if we look at the unicorn here and see what's going on, we can see, so it should be 32 times four. So we're 10 times bigger than we were supposed to. I forgot I scaled it up. I was making some artwork for a different uh, part of this project to be used later. So we'll have to go back into the unicorn and re-export, but that's no big deal because we know how to do it now. So now I, if I do it actual size, it's 16 by 16, but if I wanted to make these 32, 
So each square is now 32. We not 80, not 64, 32. There we go. So 12 rows, eight columns, 32 by 32. And now I am going to download my spreadsheet export. Let's go back over to the unicorn here. The unicorn, if I export this out, is going to be, I want to do four columns, four rows, 16 frames, but we don't want it at 10x. We want it at 1x because this one is drawn at the size I wanted, which was 32 by 32. So I will then download my sprite sheet out of there, and then we will revisit these in the finder. So now my downloaded files, we can see that the characters are a little bit bigger. Now it's 384, where before the smaller one was 192, so it's now doubled. It went from 16 to 32. This unicorn now is a little bit smaller at 128, which makes sense. 32 times 4 should be 128. So that gives me my different sprites that I can work with. All of my sprites are now sized at 32 by 32 pixels. So this completes the first part of working with this. You can download artwork, resize it as necessary using Piscale. You can create your own artwork inside of Piscale as desired. Or you can, you know, if you're crunched on time or creativity or want something as a basis to begin with, you could open up some of these files and study them or use them as kind of inspiration of how you might want to create or draw your artwork. But now with this portion done, we're going to move into how do we actually use this and access these images and animate them in our project through our code.